Okay, one of the things we've been looking at as I go on with these videos is get passing arguments or inputs to your uh, scripts. So let's do a very basic example from a previous video. I'll just go into this main.sh, very, very basic. We could do dollar sign one for the first argument, dollar sign two for the second argument. So now I can run that script and I can say Chris and John, and it says, hello, Chris, hello, John. If I get more than that, um, it just ignores those. If I don't give enough, we didn't do any checks in this particular script. So the second line is just gonna be hello blank. Uh, and we went into more of how to check, you know, for the number of arguments, this and that. Uh, but you might be also familiar with uh, passing information like dash I for something. And if you want something else to happen, you can do dash R, whatever. Let's look at how to do that. And I've written up a script here that we'll walk through and look at. And basically we're gonna use what's called get ops, which looks at those options. And then we're gonna use a case statement, which I've done videos on in the past, uh, which is a lot of times used for menus. But here we're gonna check what's passed. and set values or run functions based on what is passed. So I'm just gonna vim into a, vim is my text editor, use whatever text editor you like, uh, this check.sh. So going up to the top, it's a bash script, and I have a main function. That main function will call the check function, and then it will also run something after that to show that stuff set here, it can go up here. If you go down to the bottom, this is where we're calling the main function. We're, we're writing it up top, but we're actually running it down here. This dollar sign at symbol, basically uh, if I wanted to, um, and I should have went over this more in detail in a, diff in a different video, but we'll go back to our main script here. If I want to, I can instead I can go here, I can say argument like that, dot, and now I can say main, John, and Chris, and it's going to print every argument. So that's what the dollar sign at symbol does. It prints all arguments. So what I'm doing here, oops, not that script, but the other script, we're saying, okay, all arguments that are passed to our script, now pass them to the main function. Uh, now I'll go back up to our main function here. Now we're gonna call the check function, and I'm gonna pass it all those arguments. This is one way to do it. You can also just put all this you know, at the top of your script, but putting stuff in functions is a little bit cleaner. Uh, so we're passing all those arguments to this check function. And uh, we're gonna set some local variables here, opt in, uh, opt and i. And then we're going to uh, go through a loop. We're gonna loop through each one of these and see if they match the option passed. So opt gets is a function that's going to look at all those uh, variables that start with dash. So let's look quickly look. We have I, C, M, N, and backslash dollar sign. Let's just run the script a couple of times and see what we get. So I can go check and I can do C. Actually, it's dash C. And it says C is a good option. No input file. I can do, uh, what was another one, M? It says M has been chosen, again, with no input file. Uh, if I can do I, I says no input file, but if I go I and say give it some text, it says uh, you chose I, input is Chris. Okay, so, and if I give it an option that isn't one of those options, like H or anything else, it's gonna print out our help function. We'll look at that more. So it's not just H, but if I just do anything, uh, M is an option. Let's try K is not an option. And I can do even, um, you know, options that are in there like C and M, but if I have K in there, it's it's going to go through that and when it gets that option, it's going to run that help function because it's like K is not an option. Let's go ahead and look a little bit more at how this works. Again, at this point, after we run get ops and give it our options, starting with the colon here and then other options. Now, why is there a colon here? Well, any of these with a colon after it is saying there should be some sort of argument after that switch. So we're saying I, which is looking for an input, it's looking for text after that. So that's why we have that uh, semicolon there, or not semicolon, but colon there. So now, and we're putting that into a variable called op, and we're looping through it. So now we're gonna say, okay, we're looking at each argument given, and we're checking if it's any of these things. And if it is, do whatever's after this. If you've done case statements before, this is a basic case statement. We're saying, okay, if the argument as we're looping through is an I, we're just gonna echo out, you chose I. And then the next, then a new command, we're setting a variable input equal to whatever argument. So opt arg is whatever argument is put in the place of this uh, colon here. Uh, so we're echoing that out. And then later on in the script down here, we're checking our input 
And as long as input is not blank, we're going to print out, echo out, input is input. If it is blank, if there's nothing in that variable, we're going to print no input file, uh, which in this case is just text. We're not checking for a file, but lots of times that would be the name of a file, an input or an output file. Uh, now, if it's C, we're just going to echo out C as a good option. If it's M, we're going to set M to true. And then back up in our main function, when we get out of this check function, now we're going to say if M, so if it's true, we're going to echo out M has been chosen. But if it isn't set to true, it's just going to not print that. If n is an option, it's just going to run the n function, n func, which is down here. And there can be any number of commands in this function. And I'm just giving you different options on how you can use these here. And then the backslash eight, uh, dollar, uh, question mark, that's a question mark, not a dollar sign. Um, it's going to run the help function, which basically the backslash h is if it's anything other than those options, it's going to exit. Oh, it's going to run that function. And in this case, I say exit. Uh, which is interesting because because uh, if I don't do that exit, it will print the help function. So if I get rid of that, so here's an example. I go through here and I say C K M. Let's clear the screen. C K M. C and M are options. Here it's going to say C is an option. It's going to print our help file, but never get to the M because we exit out before we get there. If we go back in here and I remove this exit, saying that it failed, and run that same thing again. It will say C is an option, print our help function, then it will print no input file because there was no input file, and then it will print our function that happens when M is chosen. So because I had to exit there, it exits out before I get there. So it all depends on what order things need to come in your script. So this is just a very quick overlook on optget. I will we'll be using this in a future video. That's why I wanted to quickly go over it. I'll try to remember to post this in uh, Pastebin and put a link in the description of the video. If not, you can always go to my website, go to software, my notes, and search for get ops, and you'll find this among a few other scripts where I use that, so you can see different examples of it. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, this shift uh, end is just shifting the index of what we're searching through in the get op, I believe. Yes. Uh, so that is just a very quick, very basic look over get op. It might seem a little confusing at first, but really the majority of it is a case statement, uh, which I should use case statements a little bit more, uh, but they're pretty straightforward. It's kind of like an if-then statement, but with things in a list, um, like so. And a lot of times case, I use case for menus, where here it's not a menu, we're just looping through all the arguments or switches past, whatever you want to call them. There's probably technically a difference. And again, the colon here is saying anything past after I, it should be looking for an input. And here we're saying, you know, input is just why I'm calling the variable. You can call it anything you want. But the the what's in this spot past the I is the opt arg. Uh, so it's the argument passed to the get ops function. That's it. Again, we'll be going to be using this in a future video. That's why I want to go over it real quick. I do thank you for watching. And I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you watch more of my videos. And I hope that you have a great day. Thank you.